I'd like to begin tonight by introducing a true sports industry icon. Shannon Miller has won an astounding 59 international and 49 national competition medals, over half of which have been gold. She holds the distinction of being the first U.S. gymnast to win back-to-back -back world all-around titles. She broke a record for the most Olympic medals won by a U.S. athlete in any sport. That would be five. She's also led the U.S. to its first ever team gold, and in 1996 became the first American gymnast to capture a gold medal at a fully attended Summer Olympics. She is still today the most decorated Olympic gymnast in U.S. Olympic history. After retiring from competition at age 19, Shannon's success continued. She earned a law degree from Boston College and in 2010 launched Shannon Miller Lifestyle, a health and fitness organization for women. Tonight, she is here to tell us about her past experience as a professional athlete. She will highlight the types of decisions and dilemmas athletes address on a daily basis. We are very pleased to welcome to the stage, Shannon Miller. Thank you so much for inviting me to be with you today. Um, as, I, as I think through my career, there are key moments and decisions that were made that truly affected not only the outcome of my career and the success I had as an Olympian, but also the direction of my life post-Olympics. Sometimes we gloss over the behind-the-scenes concerns that even young athletes face that often have little to do with competition and more to do with life choices. Three concerns that were personal to my career and that I think are relevant to today's conversation are uh, the critical decision as to when and whether to turn professional understanding how to deal with injuries, and then what in the world do you do when you retire? Now, I was not that five-year-old that wanted to be an Olympic gold medalist from the first moment of, of turning a cartwheel. I had no idea what the Olympics were when I started. My parents, well, they were focused on raising a person, uh, not an athlete. So in our household, it was understood that education came first. And while they were extremely supportive of my gymnastics career, they were much more interested in how I did on my math test. I started gymnastics at the age of five, having no idea this sport would become such a significant part of my life. I loved to flip upside down, and I relished the challenge of learning new skills. By the age of nine, I began competing at local competitions. And by age 11, I had earned a spot on the US national team and I began representing Team USA in international competition. It was over the next couple of years that I would have to make the first of many big decisions regarding my career and uh, my life. Now, I grew up and trained in Oklahoma, where both my parents, they worked full time, and as I became more involved with gymnastics, my mother, she began judging on the weekends to earn a little extra income to help pay for my lessons, along with the different activities of my brother and my sister. By age 13, I was strongly headed toward my first world championship, and I had earned some international success at several major competitions. My parents were being pitched by big agents who felt they could get endorsements that might help offset some of the costs of training. It was just becoming too expensive to keep me in the sport at this level. I mean, here I was, I was training over 40 hours a week year round and competing as much as I possibly could to gain experience. On the surface, um, the decision to turn professional, it might seem easy. Um, earning money, doing much of what I was already doing for free <laughs> to help pay for training. However, with me at such a young age, the big question, or I think maybe the gamble, I suppose, was opting to give up a potential college scholarship in lieu of this possibility of making enough off endorsements to offset the cost of that future education in addition to paying current expenses. Now, that's a big if. At the time, there weren't many endorsement opportunities for gymnasts or even much award money offered at competitions, but collegiate gymnastics. I mean, that seemed extremely distant. I mean, honestly, I thought 19 was so old. <laughs> How would I possibly still be doing gymnastics at 19? And. Um, while I had always wanted to go to college, I had never really in my mind tied that to an athletic scholarship. But the biggest factor in the choice to go pro was that my parents simply could not keep me in the sport without financial assistance. 
So at 13 years old, I became the youngest American gymnast to turn professional. And for me, it was the right decision. Not only was I able to keep training, but I competed at my first Olympics at age 15. And then, yes, I did actually end up competing at the ripe old age of 19. <laughs> but instead of collegiately, it was at the 1996 Olympic Games. Now, being a professional gymnast, certainly at that time, it was not like being a professional basketball player or a tennis star. I think I earned $100 for my first commercial. Uh, I used that to uh, purchase some training gear but every little bit helped. It all adds up. Not only was I able to stay in gymnastics, I was able to pay for both my undergraduate degrees and law school. So for me, it was a win. However, as I watch generation after generation go through this difficult decision-making process with um, well, less of a clear choice oftentimes. I do wish there was more of a push to help young athletes and parents make this decision. I have seen it work, and athletes prosper in and out of the competitive arena, and I've watched the devastating effects when it doesn't work. The athlete that goes professional then gets injured the day before the competition. The athlete that doesn't make the cut or allows the business of professional work to derail their focus on the competition. For better or worse, there is a long-lasting effect on how these young athletes move forward in life after sport. And of course, closely aligned with this decision is also the constant concern of what do I accept and, and what do I turn down? And I think I was fortunate to have parents and coaches that really thought through some of these issues, uh, as well as agents that understood that there were boundaries for me as a person and, and certainly as a minor. But in the world of high-value endorsements, I think it's easy to fall prey to the quick and easy financial gain without looking at that long-term picture. But the fact is now, more than ever, an athlete is more than an athlete. They are a brand. So there needs to be an importance placed on thinking through your personal brand and, and whether or not a specific endorsement falls within that brand. And sometimes that means turning down lucrative offers, which can be very difficult. It means being able to resist the hard sell and the fast talk, and as a teenager, you can't possibly be expected to make all of those decisions. You need a support system that has your best interest in mind. I mean, at the age of 40, I still make these judgment calls almost every day from what goes on my Twitter feed to which contracts I sign or organizations I align with. And sometimes you get it wrong. But for the most part, um, if you stay true to yourself, your brand, your core values, then the decision becomes easier to make. Of course, these are the little side issues that you have to deal with while you're trying to finish your homework and train six or seven hours a day. The second issue I want to talk about, um, the one that I began to face more and more during my career, was the importance of finding that balance uh, with regard to injuries. Um, how do you decide when it's OK to push through an injury, and, and when do you need to take a step back and, and focus on rehab? We think about uh, competitive gymnasts as young girls, young women, and we are. Well, maybe not all of us so much anymore, <laughs> but, but we are. But we are also fierce and determined athletes, and we don't want to sit on the sidelines. So there's a bigger conversation to be had, but I think most athletes grow up with this understanding that there are certain injuries we can push through without a long-term downside. And there are other times we need to take um, a step back, just take a beat, even if that means sitting out a competition or two. But again, I think this conversation, we see it coming back to the importance of surrounding yourself with those that you can rely on, coaches, trainers, physicians, parents, that can share information and help you come to the best decision, weighing all of the options. When we talk about some of these key issues, these key decisions in an athlete's career, I think the biggest question is often, how do we help athletes surround themselves with the best advocates, the best support team to work with them and empower them to make good choices? And as an athlete, how do I gain access and education in these areas? 
And then, of course, <laughs> after your competition days are over, well, there are more questions and more issues that arise. Uh, the biggest question at that time, what do I do now? <laughs> what do I do with my life? The fact is that no one prepares you for retirement, especially with young athletes. You know, the gymnast retiring at age 18, the baseball player retiring at 32. There is this whole life to live, but often you've been in such a bubble that you aren't aware of how to move forward as a non-athlete. <laughs> it can be a very scary, very confusing, um, even a depressing time. There is the physical. Um, you go from a structured uh, training setting to often little or no activity. Uh, less focus on nutrition that can lead to unhealthy habits and weight gain. Um, there is an accountability with sports, with Olympic and professional athletics that often completely disappears with retirement. There is the mental and the emotional, whether you've left your sport on a high note or, or maybe not of your choosing due to injury or, or not making the cut. There is the letdown of going back to normal life. You can go from playing and competing in front of thousands upon thousands of fans every week or even most days to nothing. It's an adjustment. You go from being needed as part of a team, a family, to wondering exactly where you fit in. Athletes need to be better prepared for that sudden change, armed with education, whether formal or not, to understand their options moving forward. And my hope is that more of the athletic governing bodies will help prepare athletes for this sudden shift long before it happens. Understanding that the experience these athletes have had in sports and the lessons they've learned are some of the best real world experience they have to offer during life after sport and advancing their next career. These issues not only touch the surface of the many decisions and questions um, that athletes face, but today we'll have the opportunity to delve into some really interesting and thought-provoking questions and concerns. But all in all, I feel that sport makes an incredibly positive impact on our health and well-being. The life lessons you learn will help you in any endeavor and, and apply to every aspect of our lives. I know the lessons I've learned through sport help me run my company every day. They help me as a mother. And even during my battle with cancer, I have had an amazing experience through gymnastics and I have a wonderful support team to thank. <laughs> a support team that was all around me that helped keep me grounded, I think, for the most part. And while not every decision was the right one, we did generally a pretty good job of understanding the big picture. As a high level athlete, uh, I learned to set goals. I learned to work hard to achieve them. I learned that I will fail and I will fall, but I learned how to get back up. I learned how great it felt to be a part of something so much bigger than myself. And I learned that life is not sport, life is life. And I know that it was sport that allowed this, this tiny, shy little girl from Oklahoma with big hair and even bigger dreams to believe that I could do anything that I set my mind to. Thank you so much for having me here today.